One of the most powerful lessons I've learned in my life is the power of writing your story. When I was a teenager, I had this friend, his name is Derek Snow. And we would spend time together, go to the arcade, uh, play video games, play sports. Uh, we even went to the prom together with our girlfriends. We did so many things. I love going to his house. Uh, it was a great space. It was safe, it was fun. Our friends would show up there and we would do many great things. But one of the things that Derek taught me that still resonates with me today. It is the power of writing a story. Derek was a prolific writer. I mean, this dude had five subject notebooks stacked high in his bedroom. And I remember times when, you know, we would go out, have fun, do whatever we did. And Derek's discipline was profound. He would stop no matter what and take the time to write in his notebook. He taught me a valuable lesson about the power of writing a story. Because Derek's writing skills were so strong that ultimately he became a producer, director, obviously a writer, an actor on screen, on stage. The brother can tell the story. But it made me think about this lesson when it comes to resilience. Often we think of resilience as just bouncing back from a situation and achieving this state of normalcy and well-being. And that's true, don't get me wrong. But one of the things that helped me to break the cycle of multi-generational poverty and be the man that I am today is this lesson that I learned from Derek. Your imagination has the power to create the life that you want if you tell it a story. And Derek did just that with the power of his pen. We underestimate the power of writing because writing is nothing but pictures put into words. That's what it is. And when you think about your imagination, it doesn't discriminate from something that is true or false. That's why you can believe whatever people say and it can be your reality even though it's not true now when you think about that if you write a story for your life and you say i want to be the president of a company i want to overcome uh, my fear of public speaking i want to and you just fill in the blank whatever your thing is but in this case what Derek taught me even though we were in an environment that was crime infested and we lived in a safe and great space because we had caring parents, right? What Derek taught me is this one thing that I want to share with you today on the power of writing your story and using your imagination to create the life you want. This is what resilience really is because in order to bounce back from a hard situation, you have to have a story. You have to believe first that things are going to be better. You have to have a vision for your life. You have to have a path forward because the first person you have to lead is yourself. Okay, but you have to have something or someone to lead you. And what Derek taught me is that you must have a story. Hmm. Yeah, you must have a five subject notebook about your life. I'm speaking metaphorically, but I, I just want to use this as an example because when I look at his life and see where he is today and how successful he is, you must have a subject about your life. What do you want your life to be? What is the subject of your life? Now think for a minute, wherever you are, now listen to me for a second. Like, what do you want your life to be? When you think about who you are, not your circumstances, not what happened to you, not what's going on, you, you are still breathing. You still have a choice and a chance to make a difference in your life. What is the subject of your success? Like, what is it? What, what do you want to accomplish in life? What are you trying? What are you trying to achieve? Okay, that's what I mean. Five subject notebook, you know, because you're writing your life story. Now, what I love about Derek is Derek, he had 
the number one thing you need in order to create the story that you want to live, you have to have discipline. I share with you, he would stop and pause no matter what was going on, and he would write in this notebook. At the time, I didn't have that kind of discipline. You know, I didn't have uh, that kind of appetite. But what Derek was doing, he was creating his future in the present moment. So, so, so here's the first thing. You have to develop the discipline. Now, now I know when we think about discipline, we, we imagine it being some, some Herculean task, some monumental element that we have to scale. And, no, 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 no. It was incremental. He would stop at times and write. <laughs> you heard the overused uh, analogy when you're trying to do something big, you have to eat the elephant one piece at a time. In this case, he did just that, just one piece at a time. He wrote a little bit at a time. So discipline are those micro habits that you develop a little bit at a time. That's what he did, a little bit at a time. And before you know it, you know, that one five subject notebook, it, it became this, this, this stack and another stack and another stack. So you have to develop discipline. It's just one micro moment at a time. Yeah. The other thing that Snow did is that he never allowed, this is my second cue by the way, he never allowed his environment to dictate how he used his imagination. Ooh, yeah, he never allowed his environment to dictate how he used his imagination. Now, um, we live in a part of town called South Avondale, so it was, uh, it was fun, it was also dangerous. Okay, so there were a lot of things going on, but there were a lot of smart people in Avondale. Uh, mathematicians, philosophers, teachers, educators, lawyers. Don't let the media deceive you into believing that it was just filled with goons. There were some gifted people in Avondale, and Derek Snow was one of those people. But what he did was he created the environment he wanted to live in in writing his story. That's what he did. He, he wrote his story. When you look at the trajectory of his life, you see that where he was and where he is had nothing to do with his environment. It had everything to do with the story that he decided to write for himself. <laughs> so, so my second cue, what is it? Don't let your environment dictate how your imagination should work. You write your story, you take a pause, you take a break, and you say, I need to write my story because this is where I want to be. That's right. That's my third cue. My third cue, because you know I like to do threes. My third cue is simply this. It's easy. You, you know where I'm going. You need to act on the story that you have written. That's right. You need to act on it. You need to make it a reality. Don't just write it and leave it there. Don't just close the book. Don't just uh, stack it somewhere. Don't put it in a box. You need to act on the story that you wrote that day. And I would even challenge you to start doing it right now. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be flawless. And, and by the way, there is no perfect story. There is no perfect story. Everybody's story is messed up to some degree and extent. But that's what makes life interesting. It, it's the, the, the ability uh, to be creative on the fly, to adapt and change, to do something different as a result of all the unknown things that are happening, the, the intrigue, the drama, the unexpected. That's what the imagination is. But you know what? Even if that happens to you, the one thing you still have is the, the ability to write your story. You can change the script. You can change the narrative, man. And that's what I want to encourage you to do today is to write your story. Use your imagination. Okay. Create the world that you want to live in and then act on that bad boy. <laughs>